Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Veronica and today we're doing a semi chatty get ready with me where I show you how I do my hair and my makeup for a night out. Of course, we're gonna start with primer. It's got the Tula Skincare Filter Primer in Luna. I always start with primer because I don't have the best pores so any kind of blurring effect is great for me. And I do find that it helps with some oil control as well throughout the night. Of course, I did start with my skincare process, cleansing, treatment, and moisturizer. And I did notice that my hair was already starting to dry. I wanted to make sure it prepped for a blow dry so I used the heat protectant Purology Color Fanatic 21 essential benefits spray I did just start using this spray I haven't really had any issues with it so far so no complaints on my end and of course I did brush it through my hair just to make sure it was deposited evenly and then I used the Revlon one step volumizer hair dryer and styler this is a pretty cheap hair styling tool that does the job it does help you have that blowout look however today I'm just doing a very rough blow dry with it just wanting to get the frizz out because for my hairstyle I'm actually going to try the irresistible me ponytail hair extension so my hair is going to go up in a ponytail I want it to be sleek I want it to look good my hair tends to wave and volumize a lot once it dries so to make it blend with the extensions better I wanted to make sure all the frizz was out and that it was as smooth as possible of course before putting on any makeup it is essential to put on a cute headband and get your hair out of your face it's just adorable it makes the process just more fun do it. I promise you won't regret it. I also like to put on chapstick because no one likes dried lips. So this is the EOS Cherry Chapstick. To start off with our makeup, I did use the Smashbox Halo Healthy Glow All-in-One Tinted Moisturizer. And this is in the color Light Neutral. And then I applied this with the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. I am someone who just doesn't really wear foundation that often. Sometimes I feel like it's just too much and I prefer kind of the more natural look of a tinted moisturizer. That's just my own preference personally. I've used Smashbox Halo a lot and I haven't had any bad skin reactions from it so I like to stick with what works. On top of the tinted moisturizer I like to apply cream bronzer. This is the Rare Beauty Bronzer Stick in Happy Soul and I like to pop that on my cheekbones as well as my chin just to help add some definition because your girl does not have a super defined jawline which is fine. That's what cream bronzer is for and then I also added it onto my temples just to help with having color on my forehead especially since I'm going to have my hair up in a ponytail and then I like to apply the Kosas Revealer Super Creamy Plus Brightening Concealer and this is in the shade 3.2. Pretty yellow tinted, very light and creamy and I like to just use this as kind of my highlight but also to help conceal my dark circles. Before I blend both of those together I also add the NARS Complete Concealer. This concealer is in the color Light 2.4. I use that to cover any problem spots I may have before blending everything together. Once everything's applied I use that Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge to blend everything together. I'm just not someone who uses a lot of different brushes for the same thing. I just clean it after each use and then we just go into blending mode and go crazy. We go with the concealer first and the last thing is always going to be the cream bronzer just because it's darker and I don't want it muddying up the rest of my makeup. Of course now we need to set all the hard work that we just did so I'm using the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder and I am using the Real Techniques Miracle Powder Sponge to set that. Basically what I'm doing is patting all the powder first under my eyes to avoid any creasing from the concealer and then I do add it to like my smile line, my chin, and my forehead. I'm kind of doing the baking method but I'm not applying too much powder nor am I waiting for the powder to set for a certain amount of time. It is a very casual setting method. I really like to make sure that everything is good to go so I pat as much as possible and then to knock off any excess powder I use this the Sonia Kashuk Essential Powder Brush number 161 and I definitely make sure to get under my eye and not to rub too much but just do a very light knocking motion. Now I'm actually applying some cream blush. This is the NARS the Multiple Cream Blush in the shade Orgasm and I know typically you want to do creams and liquids before any kind of powders so this is kind of reverse order. You can definitely do this before applying your translucent powder. I personally just wanted to go ahead and set my concealer before it creases and I don't really find that applying cream blush over powder makes it look weird but had to note that because I know it's kind of out of order. I'm sure a lot of makeup artists are cringing at this process right now. <laughs> After directly applying the blush with the stick I like to go ahead and blend it out with my sponge and I obviously use the part of the sponge that didn't have the contour from before. Now we're going in with powder blush. I have the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 hour blush in the shade Captivating and I'm actually applying it with the Sonia Kashuk Professional Bronzing 
brush number 129. I just feel like it applies blush all over the face much more effectively. And I'm definitely a girl who likes to wear a lot of blush. So this brush definitely does the trick. For powder bronzer, we're using the Benefit Cosmetics Hula Matte Powder Bronzer in Original. And then I'm using the Sonia Kashuk Professional Angled Blush Makeup Brush number 142 to apply this. And again, this brush is intended for blush instead of bronzer. However, I'm doing more of a contour method with the bronzer. So I prefer something smaller and more angled to apply that. That way I can really get into my cheekbones. Our eyeshadow palette today is going to be the Morphe 9T Neutral Territory Artistry Palette. And we're starting with the Bear Play shade, which I'm applying all over the lid with the Elf Fluffy Eye Blender. And this is basically to ensure that everything is set and good to go with my eyelids. And it's going to make the blending process much easier. I also apply Bear Play to the sides of my nose to help with contouring. Anytime you apply any lighter shades that blend into the center of your face, it really helps to slim that nose rather than just contouring it with a dark shade. And then I do go back with my Hoola bronzer palette to then apply this darker brown color all over my crease and slightly on my lid. This is really just to bring some color to my lids and some interest and contrast to my eyes. I haven't dedicated a lot of time perfecting eyeshadow and doing like the cool designs that people do. Stay tuned, maybe I'll do that in the future. But for now in this get ready with me, this is just my standard going out on the town look. For the love of all that is good, we cannot forget our eyebrows. So I'm using the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil in 4.5 to go ahead and do that. Obviously spooling my brows, making sure there's not any like makeup caked into them after this point. And then just sparsely adding fake hairs, very tiny strokes and a lot, a lot of patience. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge expert on doing brows. To me, it's still kind of a gamble whether or not they turn out good. They're definitely sisters, not twins. But I was pretty impressed with myself doing them while filming because usually it takes a lot of focus and a lot of time for me. So I think they came out decently okay, but I'm definitely not an expert in this. And I also don't do any of the additional brow products that most people do. I find that just using this pencil is good. It lasts me all day and night. Kind of just sticking with what's simple and doesn't take too much time. Next, I like to do a really light contour with my nose just to make sure like there's color there and you can see it. I feel like it just looks better when there's some sort of color on your nose. I am still using that same fluffy brush and the Hoola contour contour. I just kind of apply it under my nose to the sides of my nose and around my nostrils as well just to give like a slightly slimming look but I definitely don't do a hardcore contour. It's just very very light. Going back into the Morphe palette we use the halfway shade and the elf blending brush to then apply this darker brown shade right into the crease just to give some interest and more depth to the eyelid. I also like to lightly apply this underneath my waterline just to add more interest and shadow shadowing to the eyes and make them even a little bit bigger with this technique. Now I'm using the Essence Extreme Lasting Eye Pencil in Silky Nude. Another way to make eyes look a little bit bigger is applying like a whitish nude color in the waterline. This is just going to add more like volume to the whites of your eyes. This technique in combination with the eyeshadow underneath the waterline is my go-to to make my eyes look a little bit bigger, but also not make the nude part of the waterline look so weird. For my upper waterline, I'm using the Maybelline Unstoppable Eyeliner in Onyx Black, and this is really just to make sure that my eyelash line looks thicker and more cohesive. I hate seeing like the whites of a waterline. <laughs> it's just a tiny pet peeve that I have. It works for some people. I don't like it on myself. This is definitely a painful process for my sensitive eyes, but it's one I'm willing to go through before applying my liquid eyeliner. For liquid eyeliner, we're using the REM Beauty Eyeliner Marker in Midnight Black, and we're doing a very subtle cat eye today. Nothing too crazy, but something to just give some oomph to this look. I'm not a huge fan of this eyeliner just because it does tend to dry out pretty quickly, but before it dries out, it has a very easy application and I do love the tip of the liner pencil. So pros and cons, I'm just using it so that I can be done with the product. I don't want to be wasteful. Of course, we all know how tedious putting on eyeliner can be, especially when you're trying to do wings and make the match. So this clip has been heavily clipped and cut. Not gonna lie, I don't think my cat eyes are that perfect. Just do your best here. That's all we really 
can do in this current world we live in. Just enjoy the process as much as you can and not get too stressed out about it. To perfect the eyeliner, I do go back into the Morphe palette and use the Win Win shade with this e.l.f. small angled brush. Kind of fills in any empty spaces and diffuses the harshness of the liner. So just a little tip, make sure to get rid of any kind of fallout that may come from the eyeshadow. I make sure to apply it to all of the liner, including like more of the inner corners of my eyes. It just makes it look a little bit darker, but more matte. Personally, I think it's a better look, so I always put eyeshadow over my eyeliner. I actually forgot to curl my lashes before doing the eyeliner, which I do recommend so it doesn't mess with the eyeliner. But since I forgot it, I went ahead and did it now before doing my mascara and my falsies. I know everyone has different ways of doing their lashes, but this is the sequence I do it in. And then we'll go ahead and go into our mascara. I am using the Rare Beauty Mascara in the shade Black and just going ahead and making sure it coats. I really, really love this mascara. I honestly don't think I'll ever use any other kind unless I need something that's waterproof because this one just separates my lashes perfectly and I never have any clumping or issues. Very, very user-friendly. Now I'm ready to put on the falsies and I'm gonna do that off camera because it's kind of difficult, but these are the Ardell Professional Wispies and they're just my go-tos. They're very cute, very casual, not too crazy for me. Let's pop off our headband because we are finally in the hair tutorial portion of this get ready with me and today we are going to try irresistible me's new ponytail hair extensions full disclaimer they didn't sponsor this video but they did send me these extensions for free for me to try and review them for you guys and they also offered a 10 percent discount code for my viewers the code is veronica-im and that will give you 10 percent off your order i do get a small commission if you use that code which does help the channel so would definitely appreciate it if you use that code if you choose to get these extensions. You can also find the link and the code to these extensions in the description box below. Trying these extensions for the very first time, definitely test the try me section at the bottom of the package. You'll find a sample of your hair just so you can make sure that the color is a color match before opening the rest of the hair. That way, if it's not a color match, you could still return it because once you open the bulk of the hair, you're not able to return your package. So make sure to open the bottom. I did review their full extensions in the past, so I knew their number two chocolate brown color was a perfect match for me. So let's go ahead and start with the ponytail tutorial. So of course the first step is actually putting our normal hair into a ponytail since their ponytail will wrap around your existing hair. And you want to make sure that your hair is very sleek and brushed out. I took a lot of time using my wet brush to make sure that the sides of my hair had zero bumps and that it was all smooth. Then once I felt good about it, I put my hair up into a pretty high Ariana style ponytail. This is what it looks like before the extensions, pretty standard very much layered kind of look and then this is what it looks like after the extension so with that in mind let me go ahead and put in those extensions so you can see exactly how to get to that result so let's open this package up and again these are the 20 inch ponytail extensions in the number two chocolate brown color they do retail for $199 but right now they're on sale for $119.90 and they do also have a VIP price of $99.50 if you shop the sale or the VIP price my 10% discount code does apply on top of that. Again, Veronica-IM gets you 10% off. I always brush out new extensions to test for shedding and there wasn't that much with these thankfully and for the structure of this ponytail extensions you actually have a comb as well as a ribbon to wrap around your initial ponytail or you can do a bun if that's what you opt to do. To install the ponytail we're going to flip it up and over our existing ponytail and insert the comb of the pony extension on top of the hair. Once that's securely fastened on top of your hair tie you can then use the ribbon to wrap around the ponytail and then you can tighten it to ensure that it stays secure all night and there's no budging. I really like the ribbon because I feel like it gives a cute girly touch but if you're someone who prefers no ribbon you can tie the ribbon portion underneath the hair so you can't see it or you could even cut it shorter so that it's not as long and it doesn't have to be in a bow and at that point you can cover the tie with a different hair accessory or you could even use the test strand that they give you for color matching and wrap that hair around around so it looks like you're using your own hair to cover your hair tie but this is what it's looking like so far and I do have like some bald spots just in the front of my hair from bleaching it so much so I'm using this nude tude palette really honestly just use any really dark brown or obviously whatever shade matches your hair color and you can literally use eyeshadow and a fluffy brush and just pat that in to any spots where you feel like it could look a little thicker this tip is really helpful if you want to adjust your hairline or just fill in any kind of weird bald spots from breakage and damage. This is something I opt to do pretty much any
anytime I want to do like a full look with a high ponytail. I went ahead and brushed out the hair and concluded that for my whole look, but you could definitely style the ponytail by curling it or straightening it more, whatever you prefer. But this is pretty much the completed look for my hair and my makeup as well. Very simple, just for a night out. I definitely want to be more experimental with my makeup and my hair, and I think it'd be really fun to film that process of learning that or even doing future tutorials once I've mastered certain techniques. So if you're interested in that, feel free to join the family and subscribe. I definitely try to post videos every other Sunday, girly things, traveling, and fashion reviews. If you like the video, feel free to hit that like button. It does help out the channel and pushes it out to more people. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching again. I'll see you next time. Bye!